back with my Amazon dropship and Excel system and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the product sheet of the system if you have not already downloaded a copy of the system on um, another video then there should be a link in the description of this video for you to do so to download and get a copy of the system and the first part of the products sheet which is what I'm explaining in this video is the ID the ID simply is a way of identifying each item that is in the table. It is a quick and easy way to identify it with an actual simple number. So first item is number one, second item is two, three, and so on and so forth. View is a link which will actually open up the item on Amazon. And this number sign, this number is actually the number of times this ASIN occurs in the table, which should be zero but the reason why I put that there is just in case you your list gets really long because you can put up to a thousand products in here you might forget that you already it's possible to forget or to not realize that you already entered an ASIN in this table so this will tell you how many times the ASIN is in the table it should only be one it should be zero right now but it should be one time but if the ASIN is seen two times then it, eventually it will tell you two okay so it should be one okay let me show you what I mean here's an item and by the way this is just a random item a desk that I found and uh, on Amazon right just a random computer desk and what I will do is go down here and just copy the ASIN of this item which is all the way at the bottom so right click copy you can also get it from the URL and right click I will use the second paste button not this paste button I don't want that white background I want the second paste button the first paste button will copy the format from the web page I don't want that I want this format so I use the second paste button which is match destination formatted okay I'm going to temporarily skip the SKU and come right back to it and explain that to you in a second the date listed is the day that you actually listen the item if it's today it's May 3rd 2020 I'll just type in the date May 3rd last updated this is like if you're manually updating this item on your own meaning you're going back to the site and you're actually checking for price changes and things like that then you want to keep track of the last time you checked it here I already entered uh, an example supplier from Home Depot and item number so you will actually have to type these in right I'll just type it again so you can see I mean it's simple but and then I just made up a random item number one two three four five okay you'll go to Home Depot you'll get the link for the item and then you'll copy and paste it here I'm not gonna actually do it um, but basically you go you find the item you get the URL you copy and paste it here so you have uh, you can always get back to the item more easily now then you have the uh, variation so let's say the item is uh, different colors you can just put brown right if you have, if there's more than one variation you can just put a number of variations here you can separate them with commas or um, I like to actually use um, the vertical bar okay so you can do that as well I mean there's different ways that you can separate these all right um, and this is the vertical bar by the way if you do shift and on the backslash button okay so you can do that if there's more than one if there's just one you just put that one name the unit price let's just say the item is 89.99 I'm just gonna make up some stuff here just to make this a little faster you're gonna put the number of units how many are you selling okay in other words um, is this ace in a one pack or is it a two pack because if it were a two pack then you need to put two because then you're gonna have to buy two of these at a time and send it right but it's a desk so of course normally it's gonna be one pack alright but this is here in case you have to put in case you have a multi pack you will then calculate the subtotal okay you're gonna put in any shipping cost let's just say it's five dollars percent tax simply meaning um, percentage of tax of course tax is somewhat unpredictable if you don't pay tax at the supplier you can just put zero if you're tax exempt at the supplier if you're not of course um, I like to go with worst case tax like 10 percent something really high um, taxes will tax will be calculated or is calculated uh, multiplied by your subtotal plus your shipping why because I'm in the US and shipping is taxable in some states in the US okay I read an article about it online in some states it isn't in my state it is 
in some states it isn't so it just depends on where you are um, so you just so it's better just to go ahead and calculate the tax on the shipping assume the worst okay assume the worst case so that's what this does then you have other meaning do you have any other expenses or any other costs when you buy this item and you can put that number here if it's more than one thing you have to just add them together and put them together okay so this is profit prediction right um, so basically we're using some averages here right so total cost is 104 this is what it will cost to get the item on average if we have a 10 percent tax right okay uh, it'll be about 104.49 right because we don't know again we don't know if the tax will be lower or less or more or whatever okay then we have the card uh, the cash back part all right but before I do the cash back I'm gonna go back words for a second and explain the skew all right um, so now for the skew the skew there are two ways you can do the skew you can either just come up with your own skew and Amazon requires that you have your own skew for each item so you can either just come up with it and just type it in yourself all right um, but you can also use the auto skew I created here so if you put yes auto skew it will automatically create a skew for you and the skew is basically going to be um, the number one meaning one unit dash Home Depot because that's the supplier dash whatever the item number is um, now I mean there may be some issues with using the skew as is for one it has a space in it and you can't have a space so um, one thing you can do to kind of cure this problem is instead of actually putting a full name for the supplier you can just put like a kind of uh, well for one right if you're gonna do Home Depot first of all just don't put a space you can do that okay so just don't put a space put Home Depot as one word and that will solve the problem another thing you can do is come up with kinda of like an abbreviation like you could do HD or HOM D EP or something like that almost like a code code name for the supplier so you can do that instead something shorter and uh, that will help with the SKU situation as well okay and this again the formula um, once you put yes will create the SKU if you put no it won't create a SKU and then that means you should just use this one okay so here if you have your own SKU that you want to use just type it in here okay I'm just gonna go ahead and say yes to the auto SKU alright and that will create the SKU automatically now um, so again this is the link to the item we talked about that that's pretty much the first half of the product sheet the way I see it is really like the information on the product from the supplier and on the Amazon side the other half is the profit side and one big part of profit for dropshippers is cashback so just adjust this a little so um, if you look at cashback cashback is broken down to different cashback you have the credit card so let's say you had like a five percent card you would put five percent and of course it's gonna calculate cashback is um, calculated on this total cost okay because when you charge anything to your credit card you get cash back on it so it's gonna be five percent times the total cost that is your total credit card cash back this total for cash back is adding all of this cash back together all three of these so uh, if you add something else maybe you're using a cash back site maybe you're getting two percent through a portal let's say through like one of those cash back sites okay um, and you should definitely be using them if you're not um, I should have some links for those as well if you need to sign up but um, basically if you're getting two percent through a site okay I call it a portal meaning a website cashback site then it's gonna take that two percent and multiply it by the subtotal so here you see the subtotal 89.99 okay because that's how cashback sites work they do not multiply by the total cost it's by the subtotal okay let me keep this moving you then have other if you have any other cashback like an actual dollar amount you can put that in here okay you've got seven dollars total cashback you've then got your um, Amazon fee you need to put that in if it's 15 percent whatever the number percentage is put that in there's a Amazon fee schedule fee on their website that you can check if you google Amazon schedule fee or I can even put a link here that there's a page there where you will see 
uh, different fees with different categories, but 15% is kind of like the prevailing fee. Um, based on this fee and based on your cashback and based on your supplier cost, I will then calculate, or rather the spreadsheet calculates, the break-even. All right, somewhat, somewhat of a little complicated formula, and that calculates the break-even for you. Now, the price on Amazon is simply the price on Amazon. So you're going to go to Amazon and see, you know, you see what price this item is going for. It's going for, uh, what is it, 153.90. So I'm going to type 153.90. Okay. And once I put that price on Amazon, here's the fee that I'm going to pay which is simply taking the price multiplying it by the Amazon fee percentage that's how you get the Amazon fee okay and then from there we can calculate the initial profit alright um, and so this initial profit is twenty six dollars and thirty three cents which is simply just taking the price on Amazon subtracting the fees from that and then also going back and saying well I have gotta subtract what I paid for the item first of all so going back to you and subtracting that total cost as well all right, so this gives us uh, an idea of what the profit potential is for this item. And this is assuming a 10% tax. So actually, if the tax is lower, like 0%, hopefully, or even just 5 or half, or even 6 or 7, right, you're going to make more profit if you go back and pay a lower tax, right? But this is basically showing you the profit you can make. Um, the margin, margin, I always say margin is percent of sale. For me, it's the profit. Uh, that you earn divided by the actual selling price okay the actual sale so uh, you get in a payment of whatever that payment is that price is that you charge uh, how does your profit compare to that then you have the markup which is your percentage of course so this is your return on investment so it's the profit you earned how does that profit compare to what you paid for the item so that's like your uh, return on investment markup percentage of cost right good thing to know especially when your money's limited you want to know how much can I make off of whatever you know little amount I might have available uh, on my credit card or whatever cash you have right how much money can you make are you gonna be able to mark up off of it when you sell this product okay so that's why I have that in there and then from there it calculates the total profit total profit is then the initial profit plus that cash back that was calculated earlier you take those two and put them together and that's going to give you a total profit and then again a margin and a market why why did I separate these you might ask and the reason is that um, a lot of times cashback in fact cashback is not instantaneous cashback sites a lot of them don't even they only pay like every 90 days and then you have to wait for it to build up and then of course credit cards also cashback is usually not available until the next billing cycle on a certain day right so because of that, you want to really separate the two profits. You want to know what profit did you make right now from the initial profit, and then what ultimately will be your profit when you add in the extra things, the cash back later on. Okay, so that's why I have initial profit and total profit as two separate things. So that is basically how the product sheet works in a nutshell. And of course, you know, you will just continue to fill in. The product sheet as you get more products and again just a reminder this says one because it means there's only one of these but let's say let's say I had like tons of products and I forgot that I had this ASIN and then I were to try to paste it again over here right and let's just pretend I'm like way you know this is just row 16 but let's say I was on row 1000 it would still work right and it's gonna tell me that I have two so you're gonna say why do I have two I have two of these ASINs that's strange it means you entered this ASIN before, right? And then you can look and search and see what's going on with that. All right, so I'm going to delete it. Um, if you want to find a product, by the way, if you're looking for a certain ASIN, um, just a quick Excel tip, you can click on the column like this and then to control F on the keyboard, which is find. The option is over here as well, at the top of your screen, find and select. And what you can do is paste an ASIN in here, let's say, or type it, Okay, let me get the ASIN copied. And find and select. I'm going to go to find. And it will find it. 
all right so even if you have like 10,000 products in here okay if you do that it will find it it will find the ASIN so that's something you should know so that when you get a lot of products and you're looking for a certain one that's what you're going to do um, something else I'll do is I'll add a filter to this so um, again I'm recording this before actually releasing the system so you must already have this on your copy but I'm gonna go ahead and add it to mine I'm gonna go ahead and add it which means you're going to have it whatever I do now is you already you already have okay so um, that's data filter by the way so you can also use this and search this way in here and select what you need if you want to only see that ASIN um, so just a little tip when you're using this okay you can like paste an ASIN in here um, again it makes more sense when the list is full so um, just another tip and that is basically the product sheet so okay great um, if you don't have a copy of this make sure you download a copy again if you have any comments or suggestions or suggestions or questions just leave them below of course I, it's hard to um, to know everything that you might possibly need but I try to cover um, the main things for using the sheet in the video and also by the way um, I have little comments up here um, little notes really um, on some of the column headings so sometimes if you're not sure what something is if you see the red thing if you click I try to kind of explain a few things here alright um, a few extra little notes I didn't place them on every single column because I felt like some were more easier to get than others um, but there are a few in there that you can use as well okay so uh, thanks for watching and as I said contact me if you need anything or any questions on the system take care